Hey everyone, thank you for joining today. Uh, good afternoon, good morning, wherever you're joining from. Uh, today we're gonna talk about uh, tecton chains. So let me start off by introducing myself. Uh, my name is Parth Patel. I'm a DevOps engineer at uh, Boxboat, an IBM tech uh, company. So initially it was Boxboat, but we recently got acquired by IBM. Uh, Boxboat specializes in you know, DevSecOps. Uh, we do a lot of container, containerization of a lot of applications, uh, you know, managing cloud infrastructure, utilizing various Kubernetes platforms in various cloud environments, as well as using OpenShift and um, and also, of course, using various different tools, you know, Helm, um, OPA, any kind of other tool you can think of that's related to DevOps, Boxboat does it. The the main focus for our, um, we've been focusing on recently is has been security. And as you know, recently, um, software security especially software supply chain security has been very important with the solar winds attacks and everything. So this presentation is going to focus on how can you mitigate some of those things. So let's get started uh, with Tekton. So starting off, let's just talk about, hey, what is Tekton? Um, so Tekton consists of a lot of different parts. So the first piece is Tekton is basically just uh, it's an open source tool and it creates it's used for uh, to create CI CD systems in uh, either across any cloud provider or on-prem system. So you can, developers can use it to build and build pipelines, do, to, do tests and deploy it, um, deploy different uh, images and applications into a Kubernetes cluster or whatever else you need to. So Tekton consists of multiple different projects. Um, so we'll walk, we'll kind of walk through each of these things and we'll also give you more in depth um, as I go through the presentation, as well as the demo that's coming up later on. So the first thing is Tekton pipelines. So this is basically the CI CD system that you build your pipeline with. So it consists of tasks, consists of uh, task runs, pipelines, pipeline runs, and then uh, a lot of different other things that come along with it. And I'll give you an example of exactly what a task and a pipeline and stuff like that look like come in the coming slides. The Tekton CLI, it's basically, you can actually, um, let's say you want to interact using a terminal with, with the actual uh, cluster that you created a Tekton. Uh, Tekton pipeline you created in a, in a specific cluster, you can use a Tekton CLI. You can use that to view your different tasks, to view your pipelines, as well as you know initiate actual pipeline runs. The dashboard, so for example, let's say you are more inclined to use a, a GUI interface. The dashboard is a great example where you can actually use a web browser and interact with the actual pipeline that you have you have deployed. Uh, again, you can, you can visualize everything. You can see all the different tasks, your different pipelines you've created. And you can actually initiate and delete and everything and do everything right from the web browser. And I'll show you that uh, up and running in this demo. And we'll use that to interact with our, uh, with our pipeline and actually initiate the runs. The catalog um, and, or the hub basically uh, is basically just a collection of different tasks. And I'll speak about this more coming up, but basically it's a good starting point for anyone that's starting out with Tekton, kind of doesn't know like, hey, how do I make some tasks? How do I make a specific pipeline? And it kind of gives you a good starting point. And, I'll show you, I'll talk about it more in the coming slides, but at the same time, I'll show you, you know, our example is actually taken from the, from the catalog. So it kind of works out and it'll help me explain a little bit more about it. And then finally, the piece, the important piece about it is the Tekton chains. This is the one that's doing the, the, the supply chain security. And of course the whole presentation is going to be based on that. So we'll talk a lot more about that coming up. So starting off uh, talking about what a task and a task run is. So a task, like I said, a tech, uh, Tekton creates tasks, and these are uh, CRD objects that they basically exist in Kubernetes, and you can interact them with using kubectl, or you can use a TKN, or you can use the, the, the GUI interface that comes with Tekton. So let me just walk you through what a task is. So a task is just a building block of a pipeline, and you can see in here that uh, each task can have multiple different steps. In this case, the specific task has one step, which is a builder, and it kind of uses a specific image, and Take some uh, take some kind of our argument and uh, accomplishes some kind of work within that image. So that's what a step uh, what a step would do, and a task would have multiple of these steps in it. A parameter is actually you can define. Let's say uh, let's say you want to pass in different values into these into these different tasks. Then you can specify these parameters, and these parameters will be passed into the actual steps that I call it later on. So this makes the task very modular and you can uh, reuse a task multiple times based on the different parameters you pass it. So in order for a task to be run in a Tekton pipeline or in Tekton in general, you have to have a task run. So that's what this object on the uh, on the right side that you see. 
Um, so you can see here the task reference references that specific task itself. So task with parameters. So you can see the name matches with the one on the left side. And then, like I said before, you can pass in the specific parameters, in this case, the flag and some URL is the values are getting passed in to that task. So then the task can actually be, okay, then it knows these are the parameters I'm gonna be working with and it actually executes that task. The next piece uh, going, up, going up the chain is basically pipeline. So a pipeline, you can think of it as basically a collection of tasks. So you can see here, it gives you a task and it gives you a task list. So in this case, there's one task being defined. It references that task. And if you, if you think about this, is, this is basically uh, the, the task run that came before it basically. So it's, it's kind of like a pipeline is just a collection of different task runs and um, you can have that, all those defined. So a task, this task, uh, this task run or a pipeline is basically uh, referencing a build push task and it's taking, it's gonna pass in these different parameters and you can have multiple tasks in that pipeline. S similar to a task before it, right? You can have different parameters. So this makes the pipeline again, very, very modular and you can pass in different parameters uh, as you see fit. And for example, let's say, you know, one example you wanna pass in, uh, you have a specific Git, uh, Git URL or something, or Git repo that you wanna pass in. So you can, you can set that as a parameter so that you can reuse that same pipeline, but, but, but pass in a different, uh, Git repo each time if you want to build different images or something like that. In order for a pipeline uh, to run, similar to a task, it needs a pipeline run. So again, you see that the name referenced here, pipeline, oh, I'm sorry, frame reference down here is a pipeline with parameters. So that matches up with this. So that pipeline object gets the pipeline run. Uh, CRD calls a pipeline object and it passes in the parameters that it needs. So for example, this pipeline here needed context and flags. So it passes in those different values and actually just does the initiation and, and runs the actual pipeline. And I'll show you all this uh, when we actually get to the demo and it'll make a, it'll kind of visual, you can visualize exactly what's happening. So like I was talking about before, the catalog is a good place to start. So if you're starting out with Tecton, it's kind of difficult to pick up like, you know, writing, a, uh, writing your task or pipeline from scratch. So the catalog is a good way for uh, you know, users to go in and look at the different tasks that the community has already created for you. And you can just combine all those different tasks together into a pipeline, or there's already predefined pipelines in there. So for example, the one we're going to be using today is called build packs. It already has specific tasks and a pipeline pipeline run already defined for you. So it makes it very easy just to, just, just to, you know, hit the ground running and kind of see what's happening so that this way you can go in and modify stuff as you see fit. The Tecton dashboard, like I said, is, uh, it's a collection or it's, it's a user interface for the Tecton. Um, so for example, like we talked about before, the pipeline, pipeline run, tasks, task run, all are defined in here. So once you actually uh, establish them or actually have them established in your, in your cluster, then you can visualize them and view them here and actually kick off specific task runs or pipeline runs as you want to and delete and modify and do whatever you want to from here. Of course, the main piece that we talk about today is Tecton chains. So Tecton Chains uh, has a lot of features, uh, but the, the main features that we wanna look at specifically is that it has the ability to sign uh, task runs. Um, so whatever results that come out uh, from your specific pipeline, Tecton Chains uh, visualize or uh, views this and waits for that, the task run to complete and actually does signing. So it uses the cryptographic keys to sign, sign the task run itself. And also, for example, let's say, you're, in this case, we're gonna be using build packs or if you're using Canical later on, if you're creating some kind of image, it'll actually sign that image for you and store those in a specific OCI registry. Uh, it also creates uh, attestations in terms of uh, provenance uh, documents. And we'll talk about that in the Salsa. Uh, so we'll talk a little bit more in the next slide about what Salsa is and how Tecton Chains helps us, helps us achieve some of the levels of Salsa. Uh, signing can be done in, with various different things. Um, we're going to be using a tool called Cosign. It's going to create us a public and private key, and but it can be. We can also use um, a KMS, uh, whatever else you want to, and attach it so that it can. Uh, you can do the signing with that. The recent update that I actually recently made uh, with the PR was basically that you can actually store uh, to multiple different backends. So by default, uh, Tecton Chains stores information into an annotation in the actual tax run object in your Kubernetes cluster. But you can have it store uh, into an OCI or uh, you know Google Container uh, storage 
um, or Google's or sorry, Google, Google Cloud Storage, or or you can store it in a DocDB. So these are the different storage options that are available. And I'll show you that you can actually store it in both locations or multiple locations at the same time if you wanted to. Um, in the future, uh, we're looking to uh, start configuring or start having Spire uh, so that we can uh, so we can establish non-falsifiable provenance. It's a little bit out of scope for this presentation, but kind of just get the community aware that tech, uh, tech tecton change is moving in that in that direction so that it can meet some of the higher levels of salsa. So salsa. Salsa is the supply chain levels for software artifacts. So there are four different levels that uh, you, you want to achieve. So what chains helps us or help chains helps an organization do is it, it helps achieve uh, level one and level two um, of, the, uh, of, the, of the Salsa, uh, the different artifact levels. So for example, the first level is a build process must be fully scripted. So the Tecton pipeline gives us that it gives us a build process that's fully scripted and generates a provenance. So the pipeline, Tecton pipelines will create is a build process that's fully scripted, automated, and the Tecton chains priest will generate a provenance for us. Whether it's signed or unsigned, Tecton, the level one does not care. So level two does care about assigned provenance, but chains already accomplishes that. We talked about that in the previous slide. You can use uh, uh, you know private keys and stuff like that in order to do the signing and assigns both the the task run results as well as the OCI image that's created. Um, and we can host and host the source and build. The third piece uh, that change kind of wants to go towards is the non fossil file by provenance. So that's what I spoke about before, where, where Spire, if you, if you introduce Spire, you introduce the non fossil file provenance where you do attestation. But that's a little bit out of scope for this presentation. But they are moving in that direction. So soon, what, once that has been accomplished and once all that work has been completed and uh, tested out, then level three can be obtained. So what is a salsa provenance? How does it get created? Um, so the provenance is basically just an attestation of some entity, uh, the builder. So in our case, our builder is gonna be Tecton, uh, Tecton Pipelines and, and it takes in, so it says if it produces uh, one or more artifacts, so in our case, it's gonna create, produce a, an image uh, and then it's gonna create us, uh, the, it takes in, it does so by, by executing some invocation. So that's where our pipeline and our task comes into play. So it takes in the invocation, takes in different parameters, materials, environment, variables, whatever it is, and does it takes all that information in order for us to create some kind of a software artifact. But in doing so, it also creates us a specific um, provenance file or provenance document that kind of gives you a specific information like, okay, how was this software artifact created? What went into it? You know, what parameters went into it? What commands were called? You know, uh, what environment variables were used? All that kind of stuff. It captures all that information. So that's what we want to capture. So that's that's what change is going to provide us. It's going to give us that uh, that provenance document that kind of gives us all that information that can be verified later on. So a few things uh, before we start the actual demo is that Tecton Chains has a lot of different uh, um, configuration that you can change around. The main things that I want to focus on today, uh, especially for this demo, is the artifact, uh, the artifact task run format. So this is the format that the task or the provenance that we create at the end will be stored in. So by default, it, it goes to Tecton. So we want it to be in the in total format. So this the in total format is the one that's salsa compliant that we talked about before. So that's the format we want to we want to produce because that's the ones that's supported by the salsa community. The, the artifact task run storage, so like I was saying before, you can store it into multiple different backends, you know, either as a tecton, this is the annotation on the actual tech, uh, task run, OCI and OCI registry, GCS, uh, you know, Google Cloud Storage, and then DocDB. By default, it goes to tecton, this is an annotation, but you can change it and have, you know, specify multiple so that it stores both in the uh, annotation and OCI. So for example, if you want a redundancy, or just in case you want to keep a backup, let's say your your cluster gets destroyed or something, you you have a backup of your your provenance file. So this this command down here basically changes that config um, changes the config, config map uh, so that it tells chains you know what you, what format you want it in and where do you want to store it. So we'll actually be running this uh, in the coming demo just, just to show that here. So the one thing you do want to remember, especially if you're creating an image. And especially if you want that, uh, if you want the image, or if you want change to do signing of the image, uh, you do have to specify 
uh, image underscore URL and anything in front of it, right? And image underscore digest. So these two results, um, as you can see here, have to be specified uh, in a specific task. So for example, uh, either your build packs or your, your Canico task, right? You have to make sure that at the end, you have a results underscore URL or underscore digest, and then chains will know, okay, I cr this disk task created some kind of a artifact, some kind of an image that, I, I, that, I, that the user wants me to sign kind of thing. So that's what it's using currently. So this might change in the future, but currently it requires these two, these two parameters to be present, uh, these two results to be present in order for that to work. And again, I'll, once we do the build text examples, I'll, I'll point this out to you so that you can, you can see it actually in actual task. So like I was saying, um, we're gonna be using Cosine to do, um, to do our signing. So Cosine is a very useful tool. It comes from a six store. Um, so you can use it for container signing, verification, and actually um, you can store that into an OCI, storing the images into an OCI registry. Um, so for a chains expects uh, a signing secret uh, to be stored in the, the, in the chains namespace. And you can see down here, there's a command actually, Cosine generate key pair. Uh, Kubernetes uh, in the uh, Tecton chains is gonna create a, a signing secret name a secret name secret in the tecton chains namespace so the cosine tool automatically will do that for you so it will actually create as a key pair it'll create as a key and a public key and uh it'll automatically um create the secret for us and then change will automatically pick that up and use that to do the signing for the images so i'm not going to show you the installation um in this demo but it's very simple so you can install tasks, you know, the Tecton pipelines and Tecton chains very easily just by uh, using some of these release.yamls that come from the specific GitHub repos. Um, so it's very simple to install and get, get it running on your cluster. Configuration again is very easy using the config map, and I'll show you that coming up. And then of course, if you want to, if you wanted to use Cosine, uh, you can go, you know, use go install, or you can do it if say you're using Mac OS or something, then you can use a brew. Uh, you can always just you know, install the binary directly onto your system by going to the GitHub repo itself. So let's, let's go start working with the demo. So what I'm gonna show you in this demo is we'll start off uh, by using Cosine to create that signing secret. Um, so I'll explain exactly what the build pack examples is doing. So we'll walk through what the pipeline looks like, the task looks like, all that kind of stuff. Uh, once the actual pipeline finishes, we'll kind of review that provenance document that I was talking about before. How does that look? Uh, how, what, what format is that in? So I'll show you that at the end. And then of course we can also use Cosine. Like I said, you can use Cosine to verify the signature. So you wanna, so change is gonna be signing that image and storing that in, into an OCI registry. So you wanna check that both the image and the attestation, that prominence document is actually signed and, and so that we know that it's not been tampered with by a third party. So before we get started, I did wanna mention that the build packs example that is in the catalog currently um, is, is uh, does not have the necessary fields like I was told, uh, like I was talking about before the underscore URL and underscore digest that are re required in order for chains to pick up on that object and do the signing. So uh, we'll be you know we'll be using a, a modified version, but there is there has been work going on basically um, to upstream all these different changes. So the catalog is being updated so that it is more chains compliant. So that in the future you don't have to worry about this. But I would say just just. Uh, if you are creating some kind of an image or some kind of artifact and you want it to be signed, make sure you double check that whatever task is doing that actual image creation, you wanna make sure that there's a result underscore your, uh, image URL and uh, image digest uh, associated with it. All right, so um, you can see this is the te Tecton dashboard running. And all I did is basically I have a, Proxy. Uh, let me go off the screen. All I have is oops, uh, a, a port forward basically going forward so that it it, it is forwarding to, to zero, uh, 9097. And that's how it appears on it. I'm just running it locally. And you can see uh, right now I don't have anything defined. There's no pipelines, there's no um, pipeline runs. Uh, pipeline resources uh, is actually getting deprecated, so this will be removed. So there's no uh, there's no reason to talk about this, uh, as well as conditions. So these two things are going to be removed. So that's why uh, I did not mention them in this presentation. The so we talked about pipelines, we talked about pipeline run, talked about task and a task run. A cluster task is basically the same thing as a task, 
but the only difference is, is that a task is in a specific namespace in Kubernetes, while, while a cluster task is not. It, you can be used in any namespace. So you define it once and it can be used in different namespaces. But a specific task, if, if for, for example, your pipeline uh, calls a specific task, but it only exists in a specific namespace, then it might not work. So this, that's what the only difference is. So here is the, the catalog that I was talking about before, the Tekton catalog. And it's a very uh, good place to get started. So you can see there are a bunch of tasks already defined in here. So for example, the build packs that we're going to be using, uh, you know, uh, curl, uh, there's also, you know, git clone. So if you want to clone in a specific repo that you're using uh, that has your, your, your Docker file in there, you want to create an image from all that kind of stuff. So mechanical, Golang, there's a lot of stuff here for that. Um, so whatever you need uh, is a good place to start. And then of course the pipelines. So specifically, we're going to be using this build packs pipeline. So you can see in here that it takes in, it takes three different tasks in order for it to run. So right here, here are the dependencies and these define or these define out the three different tasks. So we will actually apply all these so that they, they appear in our, in our, our Kubernetes cluster so that we can actually run the specific pipeline. And then after that, we'll actually, um, we'll actually, uh, install the actual pipeline and then do the actual pipeline run. So let me just walk you through. So here is the actual pipeline. So this is just, uh, you can see it's much longer and much more complicated than the small small example that I showed you before. But uh, basically it's, it has the same kind of things. The one thing I uh, did wanna mention is workspaces. Um, so let's say your pipeline has uh, multiple tasks and they each are maybe let's say they're producing some kind of an artifact or something that gets passed between tasks in that case you you would need a workspace so a workspace is basically just like you know an uh, empty directory or or a pvc that you know in kubernetes that would uh, store that specific artifact and that it could be shared between the different tasks so in this case this specific pipeline has two different ones and then of course we talked about parameters. So you can specify different parameters uh, in here. Uh, some of them are defaulted out. So for example, this source reference has a default of uh, empty string, right? So let's say you don't, um, let's say you don't want to change anything there, then you don't have to specify it. So some of these that already have a default, you don't have to specify any values. So specifically like source URL, app image, you do have to specify because there is no uh, default for it. And of course the main point of this pipeline is to create a specific uh, image from a specific uh, you know, source URL. So that, that's not defaulted out. So you have to specify those things. Um, the third piece is the task. So you can see here, it's gonna call the git clone task. It's gonna call the build task, build pack task. And then finally, it's gonna call this uh, build pack phases. So the last piece is actually not gonna be called in our, um, in our uh, example here, because we're actually building a trusted uh, build pack. In this case, this task is a build untrusted. So we don't wanna build a, an untrusted image. Uh, so this task actually will, will not get run. But in order for the pipeline to actually, you know, work or uh, initialize, it needs all three of these tasks in the cluster. So I actually opened up this, this specific one. Here's that build pack. Uh, this is a specific task for build packs. So I opened this up here. Uh, this is that one, 0 0.3, you can see. And then what I want to show here specifically is uh, right here, that type hinting that I was talking about before. Uh, results, uh, you can see it has the image underscore digest, but it's missing the image underscore URL. So if I ran this, if I ran this pipeline by itself with chains, chains will not pick up on the, uh, the image that's being created and it'll actually not do the signing. So this, this is the reason why we're modifying this image, uh, this task specifically. So here is the updated one. Um, it's actually linked in the PowerPoint. Uh, so you can use this specific one as a 0 0.4 version. And you see down here, it has a specific underscore digest and has an underscore URL. So now change will pick up on that and actually do the actual signing uh, when the time comes. So the first thing I'm gonna do is uh, use cosign to generate that uh, the signing secret. So I'm just gonna run this. Um, all it's doing is, is it's calling the cosign function and then just the, you know, the, what we talked about before is going to generate the uh, signing secret in the um, Tekton chains namespace. So that's done. It's going to create, uh, it's going to give us a public key also at the end. So it's right there. You can see that it got written out. So the next piece we're going to do is um, we're going to edit the configuration, conf uh, the config map 
because remember we've talked about this in the previous slide, we want to be in the in toto format. And we also want to, we want the storage to be both OCI and also stored into the Tekton uh, annotation. So this, this is going to take care of that for us. So I'm just going to run this. So nothing changed, but we can take a look at it. Uh, so in my case, it's already been set to that. So you can see in here, this is looking at the specific configuration map in that uh, for the Tekton chains. You can see the format is already in Toto, and you can see the uh, storage is OCI in, uh, in Tekton. So the controller will automatically, uh, let me just show you this real quick. You can see here is the chains controller that's running. So that got modified based on the config map that I, uh, that I, I just changed earlier. Here is that dashboard that's running. So that's what this is running right here. So you can visualize stuff. Uh, and here are the two different pipelines. So there's the pipeline controller and then a webhook. So for example, let's say you want um, your, uh, your, your tasks and pipelines are stored in a specific uh, repository somewhere. So the webhook can, so you can use the webhook in order for it to, you know, instantiate the pipeline run and run through that pipeline if anything ever changes. So those are different pieces that are being installed. So next, uh, like I said, we have to install the different tasks, right? So the catalog says we need to, in order for this pipeline, the build tax pipeline to run, we're missing these dependencies. So these, these are the different, the git clone task, the build tax task, and the build tax basis task. So you can see that's what I'm gonna be installing. Uh, so I did replace this with the 0 0.4, right? This is this one right here that has that underscore image. So that's the that's the task I'm using so that it will get signed once uh, this pipeline actually runs. So I'm going to do that and do the install. We can actually go back in here and take a look. Now you can see there's three different tasks up here, quick clone, the phases, and then actual build pack. We click on it and if you actually you know see the actual YAML, right? Because it is a Kubernetes object, a CRD. Um, so you can actually go in and view exactly you know, what is this task doing and all that kind of stuff. Next, we're gonna install the pipeline. So do that. And all this is doing is just installing, like the next piece of this is install the pipeline. So that's what I showed you here, which is this, the, the build tax.yaml is basically this pipeline uh, object right here. It's gonna create that for us in, in our cluster. So if I click on pipeline now, you can see the build tax is there. And again, you can you, you can view the YAML that's associated with it. Now, finally, uh, we're going to, we're going to do the actual pipeline run. So, if you remember at the beginning, in order for a pipeline to actually run, because a pipeline is just an object, right? This is, this can be reused based on the different parameters you pass it. In order for it to run, you would have to specify a pipeline run, or let's say you want to just run a specific task by itself, then you have to specify a task run. In our case, I want to run the actual pipeline. So down here, you can see the pipeline run specified. Up here is the persistent volume claim that I was talking about before because it takes in a specific workspace, right? It it, it actually, uh, the git clone and the build packs uh, task kind of work together in order for it to clone down the specific repository and then do the actual image creation, right? So it needs a shared workspace. So that's what this PVC is. So the persistent volume claim, you can see, um, matches with this one. So all that's doing is basically creating that, making sure that it's there so that the pipeline can actually use it when the time comes. Um, so you can, so right here, the reference pipeline reference is that build packs. So that's the name of our build uh, pipeline that's in our cluster currently. It's gonna take in the different parameters. So the builder image is gonna be using is the, the builder, uh, the build packs builder uh, that's located in the Docker hub right here. Uh, the app image, so what, what do I want it to be named? Um, where do I want it to be stored? It's going to be here. So that's what is specified here. Basically, I want it to be stored in ttl.sh. And ttl.sh is basically in like a very short-lived and like it's very good for development uh, use cases. Um, anyone actually can use it uh, without logging in or anything. So it's very useful for like, you know, demo purposes or this, this is what you want to make sure that you, you know, you're pushing and pulling is working properly. And of course, you don't want to do this with production or any kind of stuff like that, just for like testing, you know, for demos or anything else like that. It's, it's great, great use. Uh, all I'm doing is putting it into, you know, my repo and giving giving it the name of, you know, Web Redarn Demo 8. Uh, so it's going to pull where is the, the source code, where is that Git repo coming from? It's going to pull from this build pack sample and specifically it's going to build this uh, Ruby builder. So what I will do is I'm going to use uh, kubectl apply in this case uh, because they are uh, Kubernetes objects, right? I can just use that instead. And I'm just going to do that. And we'll take that so you can 
come in here. Now you can see the build pack run. It's actually, inst uh, so it created that object and it's actually, it found the pipeline and it's actually running now. So we can view exactly what's going on. So that's where this, this user interface comes into, comes into handy because you can see exactly, hey, what, what logs are being created within uh, each of these different tasks? Because each of these different tasks that are running, you can see them down here, they're, they're all gonna create their own task runs. So each, each of these are different pods uh, in, in your cluster. So it helps you visualize, okay, hey, what's going on with that pod kind of thing. So it gives you a nice log of it. It gives you a status of what's what's actually happening. If it finished, was there any kind of errors? And it gives you a little bit of detail, like, hey, what's happening? You know, same as that, the, the YAML configuration, what's happening or what is gonna happen in that specific uh, task that's being run. So it looks like the uh, get fetch, finished, you know, it pulled, it pulled from the build pack samples uh, as you see here. The next piece after that is gonna start, the build packs is gonna build the image, um, specifically name it this, push it to the TTL.sh registry. And it's, uh, it's gonna use that, uh, you know, the source path. So it looks like it completed it properly. Uh, so we can take a look. So we can verify that it's actually there. So go back to the top of the screen. And so next we're gonna look at is, verifying. So we want to verify, so we want to verify, hey, is the image signed? Uh, has the attestation been created? And uh, has it been stored into OCI? So the first thing we're going to do is, uh, so this TKN command, I kind of want to show this here real quick. Uh, what this does is, this is that uh, um, the Tecton CLI that I was talking about before. So what this did is basically, hey, Tecton CLI, check the pull request, or sorry, Check the uh, pipeline run. Describe the last. Describe the last pipeline run, and then use a JSON path in order to get me what the image name was. So, what it. So basically, what it did is it came here uh, on this side, looked at this, looked at the, okay, the last one run was this uh, cache image pipeline. Uh, go in here and find the one that's labeled app underscore image, which is this, and give me this value. So it's very use, uh, very useful to get information back, or you know, let's just say you wanted to describe your last pipeline run kind of thing, right? So you don't have, you don't want, you're not a you know graphical user interface person. You kind of do everything in your terminal. You can get a lot of that information. Again, same thing you got in your your your, your dashboard. You can get over here. You know, has it been finished? Has it successfully finished? What parameters did we pass in there? Uh, was there any specific results in that specific pipeline? Uh, what workspaces were used, and what tasks were actually run? And you can. You know, you can describe this. You can also describe the task run. You can describe the task, all that kind of stuff. So um, it makes it easy just to verify what's going on or uh, interact with it. So I'm just going to do this command here. Basically, it's going to store the doc image uh, as an environment variable um, in this uh, in my terminal here, so that I can use Crane. So Crane is another tool. Basically, just you can. Uh, uh, useful for verifying um, to view uh, the what's in the actual OCI registry. So when I do a crane ls, so if you remember that this is our app image, right? So that's going to be looking at the ttl.sh, uh, PXP and IP8, and then the webinar demo. So it's looking at that. So if you remember, I didn't specify a tag. Oops. I did not specify a tag in here. Uh, there we go. I did not specify a tag. So all it's doing is it's just going to, you know, by default, it's going to tag it to the latest. So you can see in here, it tagged it to the latest. So that's what this is. It also stored the .att, that's the attestation, that provenance document. And it also created, stored the actual signature in there. So what Cosign uh, allows us to do is that it allows us to verify that, hey, like you want to verify that whatever image you, you're pulling down from the internet is actually trusted, right? So for example, let's say I'm building this internally. I built this, uh, you know, some kind of um, some kind of application image, and I pushed it up to the OCI registry. And I want to pull it down into my production environment. Before I pull it down, I want to make sure that whatever image that I'm pulling down, I trust that image. And that's where this whole signing and checking and verifying comes into play. So Cosign Verify is going to take that my private key. In this case, it's going to pull it, uh, pull it from the Tecton Chains namespace, that signing secret that we created earlier. And it's going to verify that, hey, is this image signed with the key that I used to create it? So you can see right here, verification passed. Uh, you can see that cosine claims are validated. The signatures are verified against the, plea, the key. And it's also using the full shear roots. So all that stuff was also verified. And it gives you just a little bit more information. The other piece you want to check is the actual attestations. So 
that attestation document that got created by chains and got pushed up to the OCI registry, has that been tampered with? So we can use that because that's also signed. So we can you can verify, hey, no one's tampered with this uh, uh, with that specific uh, the provenance document. So that does the same thing. It kind of you know checks were validated and the keys and everything matched up. So here is the actual payload. So that's the so it's kind of giving us that back. So I'm going to copy this to here. So you can see the payload starts here and then ends there. And the next piece after that is a signature. So this is base64 encoded. So if you wanted to actually view it, I'm just, uh, I'm gonna dec decrypt it here real quick. Do a base64 decode. And then base64-d. And I'll pipe it to JQ just so it's more visually pleasing. So here is that provenance document that got stored. So like I said, uh, here is that salsa provenance. It's stored in the Toto format. The type is in Toto. Um, the name is that specific image that we created, the app image right there. That's where it got created here. Here's is a specific digest. What did the creating, right? The builder in this case was Tecton Chains. Uh, build type was specifically to change version two. And it kind of gives us more information on, okay, what happened in this specific uh, build? How was this image created? So it gives us all that information. So what parameters were passed in? So right, app image, you can see app image got passed in. Um, it says source, sub, uh, source subpath that got passed in here, uh, user ID. So all the different things that got passed in are all mentioned here. So if someone like, so let's say down the line, this pipeline no longer exists and you wanna verify like, hey, how was this image created actually? I wanna deep dive into it kind of thing. You can look at this provenance document and be like, okay, so this is all the different parameters that were used. And then these are different steps that the specific, this build pack image took in order to actually make that. So there's multiple different steps that this build uh, this build pack step actually ran and then they're all listed out here. So you can see the actual entry point and it, you know, there's a bunch of different uh, the commands that it ran, what arguments that I took in, uh, was there any kind of environment variables that I took in, gives us that information, any annotations, and then if there's any other, and then the next piece, right? So this was the first step, and then this is the second step, and then lastly, the third step, and so on and so forth. It tells us when it when the build started, when it finished, and all that different kind of information. So this is the format. Um, I think this, this 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 format is still kind of evolving. It's at, uh, you can see here, it's at version 0 0.2. Uh, this was very, very different when it first started out at, at 0 0.1. A lot of this information was not captured. So uh, version 0 0.2 does a better job of cap capturing exactly what is going on, you know, what was, what actually took place in order to create this image. So I think uh, as the iterations improve, um, as this, as a salsa provenance, uh, you know, as a community kind of works at it, works at it, I think more and more information will be captured here and, and it's gonna give us a lot more information to verify and trust that it's actually, that the image or whatever image we're using, you know, is actually trusted. So I think the whole focus of this is like, you wanna create images that you trust, but I think the overall goal is that the community kind of adopts this and that, you know, vendors, you're, you're pulling down images from your vendors. How can you trust them, right? So now, now if they kind of follow this kind of format, then you can be like, hey, I know what their public key is. I can just double check that it was actually, the image I'm pulling down got signed by their specific private key and that I trust that image. And it's, there's no other man in the middle attack happening, right? So that, and you can also check the attestations to make sure like, hey, nothing, nothing weird or nothing, you know, like in the case of solar winds or something, nothing got introduced while the image was being built that kind of could compromise the actual security of the image. And that brings us to the end of the presentation. Um, so we verified, so we verified that the, uh, we verified that the signature, the image is actually signed. We also verified that the attestation was signed. And real quick, I do wanna show, um, so let me just do our task runs. So that's getting the task runs here. Oops. So I wanna specifically get this one, right? This is the one that ran here. So it's cache build image. Um, the full name is left out, but this is the one. What I wanna show is that, hey, you remember I, I, the setting was, uh, the setting I set for storage uh, was save it to OCI and also save it to an annotation, uh, the annotations. So if I do a get task runs, and specify that name and output that in, let's say YAML format, right? Um, we can scroll up here and we can see the, you can see all the annotations in here. So Tecton Chains creates a lot of different annotations. 
Um, so specifically here is that payload. So that's what I decrypted before. Here's the same thing. If I if I did the echo base64 decode and then pi 3 jq be the same exact thing that we saw before. Here is the actual uh, signature that got stored in at the annotation and at the OCI level. And it gives you a little bit more information that yes, Tecton Chain signed it and everything is successful. So thank you. Uh, please let me know if there's any questions or anything else I can answer. So it does not look like there's any questions. Um, if there's any questions, please let me know. Uh, if not, you know, thank you for attending. Uh, I hope that I hope you guys learned a little bit about what Tecton Change is and you know what exactly it can do and how it can help you, um, especially your, you know your organization. How can it help them achieve this? Um, Parth, we do have a couple of questions coming in. Um, sure. I see one asking, "What is the future of Tecton?" So I think the future of Tecton, uh, you know, one of the things is I think the change piece is very important. I think a lot of companies and a lot of organizations are going to are moving in that direction. And because it helps you establish salsa level one and two currently, right, it's very easy to obtain those two different levels. Uh, so I think a lot of organizations are going to start adopting uh, Tecton pipelines along with Tecton chains um, so that they can actually meet, you know, the, the those requirements and be uh, you know, how a software secure uh, factory basically within the organization. Great, and someone else is asking about licensing and pricing. So this is all open source. Uh, so there is no license, um, there's no pricing. You can actually just, you can go to GitHub right now and download it and use it in your organization. So um, there's nothing, no price related to this, no licenses. It's all open source tooling. Perfect. If anyone else has questions, uh, feel free to put them in the Q&A box or in the chat box. Stick around a couple minutes longer. Now, what phase of adoption are we in for Tecton? Early adopter still? So Tecton, so Tecton pipelines, I would say, is a lot more mature than Tecton changes. Uh, change is still, uh, in terms of adoption, I think there's a few companies that are actually using it. Um, so I would say uh, Tecton pipelines are a lot more mature, but Tecton changes is improving. And, you know, as people are finding, you know, bugs and issues with it, it's, it's going to keep getting better. So I would say in terms of production ready, I would say Tecton pipelines and change is production ready, but there are a few bugs along the way. Um, and especially uh, there have, and of course, like I was being talking about before, um, they are introducing chains. So change is going to get added, um, so that will in increase the actual functionality of 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 um, or sorry, Spire is getting added to change, so it's going to increase the actual, you know, making sure that you attest that you can't falsify the actual task runs and annotations that are actually getting created uh, in your pipeline. And what should be done to address salsa levels three and four until Tecton has the capability? So in terms of salsa, so let me actually bring up the, I can share my screen here again. So let me bring up the PowerPoint. Oops. So in terms of, so the main focus is the non-falsifiable prominence. So that piece it can be obtained uh, by using Spire. So for example, if you want to create you know, um, if you had Spire running internally and you kind of, you you would have to create your own mechanism in order for it to like attest like, okay, this, this specific pipeline that I'm running is actually getting run by the Tecton controller. So there's a lot of like, you know, you probably need a sidecar and uh, all that kind of stuff running in your pipeline in, or in your cluster in order for all, all that to work. So it seems a little bit difficult um, just to do it without Tecton. Uh, so in terms of, in terms of doing it manually, I don't think there's any, anything that's been discussed currently that I know of um, to do that, to achieve level three. So uh, once change, I think there has been work 
going on. So their their improvement, basically, the that the PR has been approved, basically. So uh, work on the pipeline side and chain side has started. So I think we'll see that coming up in the near future. So I would say probably in a few months, uh, level three should be addressed by uh, chains. And then the last piece is the hermetic builds and two party reviews, right? So that's that's more like, hey, just making sure that you're working in um, you know a secure environment, maybe that's offline somewhere or something, and you're kind of following a specific standard, having two person reviews, and that could be meaning like, hey, you know, reviewers sign it with their own own uh, public and private keys, right? So uh, I reviewed this specific task run, I approve it, or or your, this provenance, I approve it. You put your you, you know you sign it with your private key, another person signs it with their private key, uh, so that's a two part two person review, and then maybe you have a. Um, admission controller running running in your production environment that's basically hey like it's checking to see that yes it's fine by two specific uh keys uh by two, two specific valid uh reviewers right because they have their, pub, uh, their the uh, admission controller would know about their pr uh, public key so that it can be like before it actually gets deployed into a production environment it has been verified so there had there so there is um uh Key Werno is actually one of the, the, the admission controllers that works well with chains. Um, so that actually automatically checks to see if the images are signed. It actually checks to see if your if your provenance document that's got that got created, right? If it meets it has specific fields in there. So there's there's actually work going on in in terms of the admission controller to make sure that this, you know, whatever you're creating and you know, making sure that it doesn't get into the production environment without first being verified. So it automatically blocks anything like that's not signed or doesn't meet your your provenance needs, all that kind of stuff, right? And in the future, you know, if it's not signed by two uh, two party review, it can block that too. Uh, any other questions? Yeah, there's one more. I'm gonna say some of these things wrong. Would that require ITSM slash CMDB integration to facilitate that two person signing process? I presume manual quote manual breaks level one so automation being paramount yes um so i'm not sure what the uh, the two the tools that you mentioned there were uh, let me scroll back if i can see it um but yes like you said it, it would have to be automated because that would break level one you would want it to be an automated process but um in that specific instance in order for it to meet level four for signing right you would it would have to be a manual step. So I'm not sure exactly, I, can, I could, you know, we can talk offline about this, but to meet level four for the, the two-party signing, it might be that, uh, you know, it maybe needs to be a manual step, but I could get back to you on that. Yeah, and to clarify, ITSM is like service now. Okay, so, got it. Yeah. Any other questions? looks like we're good for now and again you know we can always follow up with parth later if you guys want to get to further discussions so parth you want to wrap it up yes yep thank you guys thank you thanks everybody for attending um hope you all enjoyed and hope you all uh learned something in this webinar and you know please contact us if you have any more inquiries or if you have you know specific you know if you need some help with setting up tecton tecton chains um box is here to help thank you